So Jeremy, take us back to the beginning. One of our favorite things to ask our guests is that that roots, those origins, origin story. Tell us where it all started for you and your love for motorsports and love for racing at what age that was and right. what inspired you to pursue the path of motorsports. Well, you know, I'm from a small town, Owensboro, Kentucky, and, uh, you know, racing was kind of big around there, but what is it wasn't as big as like it is North Carolina here, you know, but um, really I just started racing go-karts and then, you know, the walk trips came from there. Daryl kind of took off and led the way and um, myself and the Greens and all of us came, you know, followed later on, but uh, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do at a young age, you know, that's all I really thought about and, and kind of barely made it through school because I was always thinking about race cars and racing go-karts and all this stuff, so uh, I really had no choice but either make it or I've probably been stuck in Owensboro right now doing something that I didn't, you know, don't really want to do. So I've had a great career and, uh, uh, you know, done a lot of good things and, and just seen a lot of stuff, you know, throughout the career, throughout my career. And I uh, just um, really can't take that away. You know, it's something that I'm really proud of. You know, you, you go back and look at all the things that you, you've got to see and all the racetracks you got to go to and all that stuff. And, um, you know, it all really stems back to, like I said, Daryl kind of leading the way for us and, and being inspired and, and, you know, just moving on. So, Jeremy, man, that's that's interesting to hear. Uh, man, when was it? When was it? You were probably growing up doing racing go-karts and winning and winning championships in go-karts. And was it your dad, your uncle? Who gave you that first shot at, uh, you know, at a, at a you know, an asphalt track or dirt track? You know, kind of kind of take us to that story. Did you, you know, was it late model stock right. cars? And, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, how did you get your big break into NASCAR? You know, who who, who helped you do right. that? Did you get a phone call from somebody? T tell us that story. Man, it's a, it's a long story, but I'll tell you the best I can here as far as it goes. But, um, you know, I started off, uh, you know, racing go-karts and just kept moving up, you know, every class. And then I got about 15 years old and realized I wanted to race stock cars. You know, there was um, two racetracks around, around Owensboro that was like a dirt track at Whitney Hollow Speedway and then Kentucky Motor Speedway was asphalt. So, um, I kind of just started off racing at a uh, Kentucky Motor Speedway in a bomber class, which is like, I think I had a 72 Impala or something like that to start with. And, and you could just put, um, a row cage in it, you know, knock the headlights out of it and go racing. And that's what we did. And, um, you know, other thing from the junkyard, you know, you go, go back there and buy all your stuff and you know, your parts come, come from an old junkyard that you can find. It's got old cars like that in it. And, um, then just kept moving up, you know, moving up street stocks and then finally made it to late models and, uh, was kind of, you know, running good, running great, really, you know, as far as late model stuff goes. And then uh, just felt like that was, you know, as far as I was going to be able to get around there, I needed to move on and, and do something different. And I was able to meet um, a couple of people from uh, Nashville, Tennessee. That really was my biggest break, you know, and uh, I met them by racing down there. And then uh, they were, you know, come out to be the Sabre Brothers Trucking Company who owned the, owned the, the, the company, whatever. And so I talked to them about coming down and just working in, in their shop as a fabricator, you know, you know, part-time, full-time, it didn't matter. Um, and they decided that they'd uh, pay me a little bit to come on down to Nashville, Tennessee. And I went down there and started working for them. And um, next thing I knew, I got an opportunity to drive one of their cars. You know, at the time they were running, um, I think, uh, Eddie Bearswell and Ken Reagan and all those guys were, were driving their cars for them. And, and I was working on their cars and, and was able to um, – uh, talk them into letting me drive their car a couple times in Nashville, Tennessee, because I'd been racing down there. And uh, next thing I know, I'm running ARCA and then full time, you know, ARCA and then um, uh, started cup racing. And by the time we started cup racing, they, they were uh, kind of on a limited budget, you know, and they kind of would run, you know, just whatever races they wanted to run three or four a year, five a year, it didn't matter. And I thought, heck, that's better than nothing, you know, go run five cup races. And so I started doing that. And then um, next thing I know, I got a call from uh, Kelly Yarborough and which was one of my longtime heroes. And um, i never forget the day he called me. I, you know, he, he called and I was like, hello. And he said, hey, what, is this Jeremy? I said, yeah. He says, Kale. I said, Kale who? He said, Kale Yarborough. And I'm like, no, nah, this ain't Kale Yarborough. I thought it was one of my buddies messing with me. You know, I said, this game be Kale Yarborough, you know? And uh, yeah, this is me. You know, then I could tell it was him with a Southern accent he had. And um, he said, you know, for me to come on out there and talk to him. And so I jumped on a plane and and uh, flew out and talked to Kale. And it was, you know, from there on, it was just, uh, took off for me, really. You know, I, I went to drive for him for a while, a couple of years, and then uh, got the opportunity with uh, Kranifus Haas, uh, which later on was bought out by Roger Penske and turned into Penske Kranifus, and then uh, then Everett Hams, and, you know, just kind of takes off from there, you know. I think everybody knows the rest of what happened after that, but it was, uh, it was um, pretty, you know, pretty good journey, but really looking back, that all happened within a, like a 10-year period, you know, or six or eight-year period, and so a lot of things in my life happened really fast, and, and you know, it's like uh, I just made the right moves at the right time, you know, and that's what I tell a lot of people 
this day and time. And yeah, you know, I never had the money to go buy a ride or go buy myself into something. So I was always, when opportunity, you know, approached me, I wasn't afraid to take it. And, and you know, I was just able to, to really look like I knew what I was doing. I didn't, you know, I just kind of, you know, when, <laughs> that, when Sandler's called me, I'm like, yeah, I'll go down and race for you, you know, and that looked like a great move. And then, then when Kale called, I, you know, took that opportunity. And then, so it just looked like everything was perfect, but, uh, I got lucky along the way, I guess, you know, making the right decisions and being able to put myself in the right places at the right time. Man, that, well, man, what a great story. I remember the Saddlers well. They had great art yeah. cars and cup cars. And, uh, you know, to not be racing full time, you know, they don't take uh, Eddie Beerswell and Ken Reagan out of their cars to put somebody else that they didn't right. see that, you know, they saw something in you. And obviously, I remember you driving for them that, you know, back in the, I, I think it was might have been the middle nineties or whenever it was late nineties. Exactly. And uh, man, yep. you know, to get the attention of Kelly Yarbrough, dude, that's, that's amazing. And I, you right. know, you, you created opportunities, but man, your ability and your driving talent, you know, when you get phone calls from somebody like the great Kelly Yarbrough, uh, he saw right. something. I mean, that guy's, I mean, superstar champion. I mean, legend. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's amazing to, to get a phone call from Kelly Yarbrough, man, that's that's what's it, that's right. quite a story, right? You know, my whole career was kind of like that. You know, I, like I was, drove for Kale and I was able to race with Daryl Waltrip, you know, and and uh, Dale Earnhardt, you know, Richard Petty was around, you know, just Kyle Petty, all those guys, you know, um, and the list goes on. Mark Martin, you know, um, you know, Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte, Bobby Labonte, just every, all those guys that really made the sport what it is. I was able to come in and they were all heroes of mine, you know, people I really looked up to. And uh, so to come in and be able to race with those guys were just, just awesome. You know, and that, that was kind of the peak of the sport. I feel like too, you know, those guys are really the pioneers of it. And, you know, starting with Kale and all those guys and Petties, but it worked up to where, you know, right at the peak of it was Dale Earnhardt and Walter and all those guys. So, you know, that, that's what's pretty cool. when you look back and knowing that I was, uh, you know, be able to do that. And, and, you know, as a little kid watching the Daytona 500, you know, watching Kale and Donnie fight and, Right. TV, you know, and, and just seeing all that stuff and just be a part of that is pretty cool.